So this, the sad story of my father, which I've never told, but I'll tell it now. My father got, uh, my father was in the Air Force. He discharged. After they diagnosed him with narcissistic personality disorder, they offered him a full military pension, six or $7,000 a month saying that, you know, you have this mental disorder, we'll give it to you because you were such a, a, a fantastic member of the Air Force. My dad was actually in intelligence. Some right-wing people on the internet think I'm a CIA plant because my father was with intelligence. I'm not a CIA plant. But my father was in intelligence. So when my father joined the Air Force, he got on the bus, like everyone else did back then in Alabama, got on the bus, da 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 you go, you do an IQ test. My father did so good, they moved him to, to intelligence. And my father, to this day, held still holds, I believe. At the time of his death, he still held it. Fastest assimilation of a foreign language. So back in the 80s and 90s, if they needed someone who speaks Russian, they'd train a native English or American person. Nowadays, you can get an Estonian or a Latvian because they're pro-EU and they speak Russian fluently. It's easy. Back then, you need a Russian speaker. You teach them. So they taught my dad Russian. He, he, he learned Russian fluently in 15 days, head to toe. So he held the fastest assimilation of the Russian language. I know that because when he died, they got a message on Facebook Meta. I got a message on Facebook from a guy who I uh, never heard of, just saying, hi, you don't know who I am. I was in the Air Force with your father. I heard of his passing. I just want to let you know that I was in the same place as your father. I was a linguist also for the Air Force. At the time, I was living with a Russian woman and we spoke Russian fluently in the house. And your father and I started classes at the same time. And I can say with certainty, the way your father learned things was, was inhuman. It was robotic. Within three weeks, he was correcting me on my Russian. <laughs> <laughs> like he was... That, that's who he was, right? So he spoke Russian and Spanish and German. We were also in Berlin at the fall of the Berlin Wall. So he did a lot of things. So he was a linguist. So he used to listen to the bugs. If they bugged the room, he'd listen to the bug in Russian and translate it. Um, so that's what my father did. But anyway, when they discharged him, they said he had narcissistic personality disorder. And the reason they said he had that is because he refused to listen to one of his commanders. I don't know the exact story, so I don't want to say it on tape, but he refused to listen to one of his commanders about a recording on a tape. And my father was arguing with him about the translation of a, a certain word. My father believed it was slang for something else. His superior believed it was something else. They got into a personal beef that developed over months and months and months of arguments about translation. And eventually, at the end, my dad ended up being told to sweep outside for eight hours a day. And I got to the point where my father got discharged. So when they discharged him, they diagnosed him with narcissistic personality disorder because he said he wouldn't listen. And they offered him this military pension and he refused it. He said, my sanity is not for sale. Maybe 10 years before he died, he called me and said, you know, I've been principled for so long and, and the way the world's turning and what American government's doing. And maybe I should have just signed. Or do you think I should have just signed? He didn't say maybe. He said, do you think I should have just signed? I said, no, dad, no. You get to live with a pure heart. You shouldn't have just sign it. Your mother's saying that I should just sign it now because I get back to you. Sign what exactly? Sign yeah. the, the narcissistic personality disorder, oh. sell his sanity and get back pay, which at the time would be like half a million dollars. I mean, I by, just, by the way, just so you know, a lot of people signed it. A lot, a of, lot of military. I mean, you know, people who got out, uh, you signed, you get all this incredible pension, back pay. And why do they want you to sign this? Why do they want his father to sign this? They want to sign it because he admits fault. It's all your fault. You're wrong about everything. You're a psycho. Your sanity is for sale. You uh, sell your sanity for five thousand dollars a month. My your disability is for sale. Is for your sale. disability, yeah. yeah. So he he found out that he could get back pay if he signed it. So he had a long conversation with me, and I said, "Look, Dad, I think you did the right thing. I'm so proud of you." Da, da, da. And we talked back and forth. And he said, "You know what? Your mother. This is the time we didn't have money. Your mother is a dinner lady. My mother was a dinner lady at this point. After we moved to England, we had some things, but she was a dinner lady. She got like four hundred dollars a month for cleaning plates. She had arthritis. She was starting to get bad knee from standing up all day. Because you know, I'm not even with her anymore." She calls me so many headaches, but I can't let her just wash dishes, son. I might, I might just sign it. I was like, well, dad, the choice is yours. My dad agreed. He goes, look, I'm running out of time anyway. I'm running out of life. I've, I've taught, I taught you boys a lesson. You know what that I need. He went to sign it. He went to the military to try and sign it for the back pay. They declined it. He said, ah, you're not crazy anymore. No, wouldn't give him the money. Funny that.